Indiva Limited, NDVAF stock on the OTC. I'm going around and I'm kind of trying to get as much content as I can before, say, September 1st on as many of the OTCs as I can within this industry. The reason being, I believe that probably August, September, October timeframe, we're probably going to get some kind of comment out of HHS as to what they plan to recommend for legalization, rescheduling of medical. All right. NDVAF limited. Here's some numbers I want to take a look at. This is one of those ones I kind of like, but their numbers aren't quite there yet. Uh, nonetheless, a rising tide lifts all boats equally. Should we get a big surge in over the course of several months? This is one that will probably go higher just as well as a lot of the other OTC stocks. Let's jump in. I'll show you where their financials are at this point. Here's a look at NDVAF's Indiva Limited NDVAF OTC's uh, revenue picture. Now, on this, I have some future revenue that I'm uh, I've got in a few more slides, and it shows that a lot of analysts are really positive on this year and next year's revenue that we're going to start seeing the previous year's eclipse. Nonetheless, we haven't quite hit um, their all-time high yet but this is indicative of the entire industry. We've seen a lot of contraction. You're going to see a lot of probably cleaning out. Companies just aren't going to make it for a couple reasons. Number one, the cheap money, sort of the irresponsible money where it was so inexpensive, people were lending it out for any reason whatsoever. Well, money's not expensive anymore. And those companies that were created that probably shouldn't have been, they're not going to be able to get that money anymore. And that's their lifeblood at this point. So given that, uh, you're going to need to see a lot of these companies start performing. That's both good news and bad news because the lower, say, one-third of these companies within this industry are probably going to get shaken out, which means pricing power is going to improve for the remaining of these companies. It's sort of a kind of a transition you're going to start seeing over, say, the next two years. We're going to see more and more BKs, um, and that's just, that's just economics. Moving forward with these guys, uh, gross margins, not quite there. Roughly about 25%. They need to double that, maybe even hit more than double that. 55 to 65% would be a real good sweet spot for gross margins. They're going to have to scale up their, their revenue significantly. But over the course of, say, two to three years, they may be able to really kind of see some improvements in gross margins. Um, moving forward, operating efficiencies, they're fairly lean and mean in that regard. They're about 40% 40, 40 with operating efficiencies. Want to see between 15 and 20%. So should they be able to double their revenue over the course of, say, three years, two and a half to three and a half years, and they keep operating efficiencies, operating costs exactly the same, that would take that 45% and bring it down to about 22.5% on a linear basis. No company operates on a linear basis like that but it'll give you an idea as to what might be possible moving forward. Um, here's sort of the sad story of these guys. You need to get to EBIT uh, profitability to really be able to explain to investors and lenders, listen, we're almost there. All we have to do at this point is just scale up. Now, this isn't to say that Indiva is not there yet. Because again, if they were to scale up, their gross margins would improve significantly. Their operating efficiencies would improve significantly. Then they could hit that EBITDA positive number. But this has been several years at this point, and many companies already are. There will be winners and losers. And that's one of the important things to kind of start looking at these companies. And I'm trying to do it. Like I said, I'm trying to do as much uh, content on a lot of these companies as possible going into the fall because that's when I think things are going to start really lighting up and become a fireworks show. So should you be involved in this and this stock does start, start to spike up, ask yourself a reasonable question. Are they going to make it? More than likely, 99.9% .9 of these stocks are going to fall right back down. Would you necessarily want to hold on to a company whose stock is falling 
that doesn't necessarily have positive future when you're looking at multiple different stocks. You could be looking at, say, a green thumb versus an Indiva and asking the question, green thumb is profitable, Indiva is not. Which one should I own? I think that answers itself. Uh, total equity. I'm a big believer in total equity. Li uh, assets over liabilities um, or less liabilities. Your future is your total equity. If it's continually improving, that says that you're not taking on too much debt, that your assets are growing, and that, therefore your future is growing. Looking at this chart, let's just move forward. Here's revenue projections. And I took um, 23 and 24 from uh, analyst projections. And then I sort of moved forward for the last three years, 25, 26, and 27, asking the question if they can go ahead and, and continue forward in that manner, they'll almost get to about 50 million should they be able to get down that road. You saw total equity. You saw EBITDA. You saw the lack of revenue. You saw where margins are. This is a stock that I wouldn't necessarily fall in love with, fall, just falling all over. It's just, especially when you're comparing all the companies that are available. This is a company that's going to be tough to move forward. They're going to have to really kind of ramp things up moving forward when you're looking at them purely from a financial perspective. Every company has products. Every company has a plan or a dream. But the numbers tell the story. And so does the chart price. These guys do not have a monopoly on a stock that is continually falling at all. This is the entire industry. And until we have some catalyst event, such as HHS shifting things, DOJ moving forward with what it's going to do, Biden making an executive signature, and analysts sending out messages to potential investors saying, now is the time. And these are the reasons why. And these are the companies that are going to change because of that. Until you get those new investors coming in, these stocks are going to keep falling because there's nothing supporting them. And short sellers, because there's nothing supporting them, keep selling more. And because short sellers keep selling more, people keep getting out, cutting their losses and running. So it's a vicious feedback circle that until there's a catalyst event, nothing's going to turn. We've seen some stock movements in certainly MSOS ETF popped up over the past couple of days, a couple of weeks actually, but then fell right back down. It's sitting around 550 right now. I'm not sure where it's going to go for the next couple of weeks. My thinking is with a lack of po uh, positive catalysts, continually lower until we get that event. Otherwise, these stocks are probably just going to keep slipping lower and lower. But then eventually, more and more new investors are going to start showing up because there's a massive shift in the industry. That's what we're waiting on. Would I get involved in these guys? I think they're falling behind. I might have liked them before because of a story, because of one thing or another. But the bottom line is the numbers. And that's what I'm looking at. And I'm treating everything as a business decision. I do not have this stock. I wouldn't buy it. There are others that are better positioned. Some are profitable. Why get involved with one that is not? Should you? Uh, should there be a surge and anybody was holding on to this? I'm saying across the board for myself, anything. When we get that surge, I'm taking all that money and I'm running. I'm stepping back and I'll be looking at each one of these stocks and asking the question, I've been sitting on these things for maybe two and a half, three, three and a half, four years, whatever time frame might be. Which ones do I really want? I wouldn't be messing with this one, I don't think. We'll see you in the next video.